Okay, so this is the second video review for chapter 16 on carbohydrates. First part dealt with stereochemistry. Next part here we'll begin talking about what carbohydrates actually are. We talked about carbohydrates. I said, well, despite the fact that the name says carbohydrates, they are not hydrates of carbon. You might be familiar with the chemical formula for glucose, C6H12O6. This is a chemical formula for glucose. The reason people thought that these were hydrates of carbon is because, well, there's some chemical reasons too, but I won't get into that. But you can see there's actually six waters, if you want to think about it, six waters of hydration. in glucose. So if it's C6, it's got six waters of hydration, right? So six times two is twelve, right? So twelve hydrogens, six times one, six oxygens. And so that's one of the reasons why they considered these hydrates of carbon, but, but they are not. These uh, In a hydrate, the waters are not covalently bound, so you can r easily remove them by heating the compound up and add it back by adding water, but you cannot do that with carbohydrates. Okay. The five major functions of carbohydrates in living organisms. I know I talked about these, but I don't think I enumerated them. One of the main ones, of course, is for food or fuel. And for uh, example here would be glucose and uh, fructose and also galactose. These are the three galactose. These are the three monosaccharides. Glucose is especially important because this is blood sugar. We saw in the laboratory on carbohydrates that fructose can actually rearrange to give you glucose. The three of these, I, I wouldn't say they're interchangeable, but they, they, they do provide direct energy for the cell. Another role that these carbohydrates perform is not for direct food or fuel, but for storage of energy. So let's say energy storage. And it's not really energy. It's I'm gonna, gonna say it's not really energy. Because I don't want you confusing energy with ATP, but uh, it we'll be talking about later in the semester, but I'll say fuel storage. So this is something that can be used immediately, but is still important. And for plants this was starch. For animals, we had animal starch or glycogen. Glycogen is sometimes referred to as animal starch. We also saw that these provide a role in digestion. So, And I just put here dietary fiber. The dietary fiber is this carbohydrate called cellulose. They also have a protective role. So protection. Example here is uh, mucus. So I showed you an example of a muco, what we call muco polysaccharides. Saccharides or just mucus or phlegm or snot. Uh, they also perform a protective role in uh, our joints. So the synovial fluid, synovial fluid in joints, this lubricates our joints. So we have hyaluronic acid and chondroitin for a couple examples there. And the last one is cell cell recognition. On the surface of cells, there are proteins embedded in the cell membrane, and many of those proteins are actually what we call glycosylated. So let's say glycosylated, glycosylated cell surface. 
receptors. Glycosylated cell surface receptors or glycosylated cell surface receptors or recognition determinants. So we'll for the rec determ recognition determinants we have I'll just say blood groups. Blood groups A, B, and O. For cell surface receptors, there's many, but I'll just give an example of the insulin receptor. Talk more about insulin in another chapter, but essentially it's a it's a hormone circulates in your blood and it tells your cells to bring in glucose. So it's it's a protein that sits on, on your red blood cell, for example and it, it's actually glycosylated as well. It has carbohydrate molecules attached to it. Okay, classify carbohydrates as monosaccharides, disaccharides, or polysaccharides and the physical properties of each class and give examples of each. It's a lot. I don't think we're going to be able to fit all that here, but there is another document online that I won't go through completely. I'll have you kind of work on that on your own, but I'll kind of give you an idea of the types of things to put on that. So. For right here, it will not include anything, but the monosaccharides, we had glucose, we had galactose, and we had fructose. Disaccharides, we had maltose, let's make an abbreviation here, G-L-U, G-A-L, and FRU for fructose, makes it a little bit easier. Maltose is two glucose units linked alpha 1, 4. Galactose, I'm sorry, uh, the next one is lactose, and that contains galactose linked to glucose. The last one is sucrose, and this is uh, glucose linked to now, as far as properties are concerned, the monosaccharides and disaccharides, they are all sugars. And that's because they taste sweet. So a sugar is simply a sweet tasting carbohydrate. Of course, they are all D carbohydrates. Remember the D tells us in a Fisher projection that this alcohol group on the bottom is on the right. It doesn't mean that they are dextrorotatory. Turns out that they are, but that's really, really not all that important. What uh, is important is to know that the D means that this alcohol group is on the right in a Fisher projection. They are dextrorotatory. Extra rotatory, which means that they rotate plane polarized light to the right, so they have a plus enantiomer. An arrow. Okay. And all of them, except for sucrose, are reducing. This is blue. All but sucrose are reducing sugars. Sucrose is non-reducing. What does that mean? Well, a reducing sugar will give you a positive Phalanx test or Benedict's test. We use the Phalanx test in lab. It turns the blue copper plus two ion to the red copper plus one. So it reduces that copper from two down to one. In the process, it gets it gets oxidized from the aldehyde here to the acid. So you can look back at your lab 
or or your uh, obviously your textbook or your lab where we talked about those reactions. But sucrose doesn't, and the reason that these guys do is because they have a hemiacetal. So they have a hemiacetal. I should say a cyclic, because it forms a ring. Right, a cyclic hemiacetal that can open up to give an aldehyde. Sucrose doesn't. Sucrose, sucrose has only acetal bonds. No hemi acetal, which means it cannot reverse and open up that cyclic hemi that cyclic acetal. Cyclic acetals are more stable; they do not open up to reveal the aldehyde. So sucrose is non-reducing. All right, polysaccharides. We had three main types. We had amylose. We had amylopectin. I'm going to put here glycogen as well. Glycogen and amylopectin are very similar. And the last one, cellulose. The thing about all these guys are that they are not sweet. All right. They're carbohydrates, but they're not sweet, so they're not sugars. Sometimes they're referred to as complex carbohydrates. Amylose and amylopectin, these are components of starch. I mentioned before, glycogen is animal starch. Uh, they're also not soluble, not sweet, not soluble. Okay. Amylose is not not branched, not branched. So a polysaccharide has a number, you know, essentially thousands of individual glucose units linked together. And that's something else I should say. Uh, they're not soluble. They only contain glucose. They're linked alpha 1, 4 in an acetal bond or a glycosidic bond. Amylose is not branched, but amylopectin and glycogen are branched. These guys are branched. They have these alpha 1, 6 branches. Cellulose, likewise, not branched. But the difference here is it's beta 1, 4. These guys are all linked together in alpha 1, 4 glycosidic bonds, or in the previous chapter we call these acetal bonds. Now I'll call them glycosidic bonds. acetals, but cellulose is a beta-1,4 linkage, and we cannot hydrolyze that beta-1,4 linkage, so we do not eat, well, we do eat cellulose, it provides that dietary fiber, but we do not hydro, uh, hydrolyze it or release free glucose from cellulose, so we don't get any energy from it. So just say here, this is, again, dietary fiber, not metabolized. So, no energy from no energy from cellulose. All right, a glycoside. What is meant by a glycoside? Glycoside is simply something that contains a glycosidic bond or an acetal bond. So we're talking about a disaccharide or polysaccharide. So a glycoside contains a glycosidic bond the same thing as an acetal. An anomer. What is an anomer? Anomers, well, these come in two forms, kind of like D and L. Alpha is down. Uh, beta is up. And I'll draw a couple, I'll draw a couple anomers over here. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so I drew a pentose. All right. 
This hydroxyl group, this is anomeric carbon. Okay, how do I know it's anomeric carbon? It is the, uh, it would be the acetyl or the hemiacetyl carbon, right? In this case, it's a hemiacetyl. This carbon, oxygen carbon, let me highlight these bonds, carbon, oxygen carbon, and the OH, so we have a hemiacetyl. If the alpha group is down, or sorry, the hydroxyl group is down, it's referred to as alpha. I could redraw this. I could put the alcohol group on the top, the hydrogen on the bottom, and now the alcohol group is on the top side, so it's beta. So we have alpha, beta, anomers. D and L isomers, these are the enantiomers that we talked about earlier. Come in two forms, D and L. One, one will rotate light one way, one will rotate light the other way. By the way, there's no way to, uh, to determine just by looking at the structure if it's going to rotate light clockwise and be dextrorotatory or counterclockwise. So clockwise rotation is termed dextro rotatory and if it if it's a mirror image its enantiomer will rotate like counterclockwise we call that the minus enantiomer so this is a minus so this is a minus sign that's termed level rotatory but the D and L that we talked about before does not mean it's plus and minus, it just means the alcohol group is either on the right hand side and it's D, or if it would be on the left hand side here it would be L. Uh, phosphate esters, uh, let's not worry about phosphate esters right now. That's something that's here because in DNA, DNA contains ribose in the, uh, uh, in the backbone of DNA which is ribose is a carbohydrate, right? All carbohydrates end in O's. And those riboses are linked by phosphate esters. Uh, it's not something that we really need to talk about here. However, it's, I don't think they discuss it in the, in, in the chapter. So we'll skip that. All right, so this is the first page. I'm going to take a break here and break this review into actually three separate videos. So the first one was on stereochemistry, the first page here, is number two and then the last part will finish up this document.